an historic night of football for the Houston Texans. It's caught by Billy Miller. Touchdown. A night of first, first triumphs, first setbacks. But neither the players nor the fans gave up. And while one player's future remains unclear, one thing is certain. The Texans will grow as a team. From Canton to Houston, our team coverage begins now. And good evening, everyone. I'm Cheryl Fryer. Good evening. I'm Art Rascone. Dave Ward, Gina Gaston, and Bob Allen will join us live from Canton in just a moment. But, but, but we want to first start our team coverage of the Hall of Fame game with the latest on the injured Texans player. Tim Melton is live now in Texans Central to update us on Leomont Evans. Tim? Art and Shara, uh, the final score tonight, the Giants knocking off the Texans, 34-17 in the Hall of Fame game. But you know, as great as our anticipation of this game has been, just as great is the hope of every football player, coach, and fan that we never see a player go down. But in the second quarter tonight, up at the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio, Leomont Evans' safety went down face first on the turf of Fawcett Stadium. He was rushing the Giants punter, but he first encountered the Giants' Sean Bennett. And when Leomont lowered his head and ran into Bennett, he immediately collapsed. Trainers rushed out. Leomont taken off the field on a stretcher, his head secured. First report said he had no feeling in his arms and legs. But to get an update on his situation, let's go live via phone up to Canton, Ohio, Bob Slovak standing by. Bob, what is the latest? Thank you, Tim. I'm uh, here at the Altman Hospital. It's a level one trauma center here in Canton, Ohio. And the latest word is, is that Leomont Evans has regained some feeling in both of his legs and his upper abdomen. That is great news. He uh, arrived here with Dr. Walter, Walter Lowe, the Texans team physician. He underwent an MRI. It came back normal. The diagnosis was a spinal cord contusion. As I said, he started getting feeling back in his upper abdomen about an hour and a half ago, 30 minutes ago, started getting feeling back in his right leg. Now he's starting to get some feeling back in his left leg. Great news there. Again, team physician Dr. Walter, Walter Lowe treating Texan safety, Leomont Evans. Evans has regained feeling in his legs and upper abdomen. Texans owner Bob McNair, we just got word, is on his way over here to join Evans at the hospital. Live in Canton, Bob Slovak, 13 Eyewitness Sports. All right, Bob, thank you very much for that report. The news is great, uh, considering the, the way it started out for Leomont Evans. So our hopes and prayers are with him that everything is going to turn out all right and that his body is just recovering from what was a very violent shock. Now let's go live to Canton, Ohio, down to the field. Bob Allen standing by. Bob, uh, again, a game that the Texans lose, but uh, you don't really look at it that way, do you? There's a whole lot more involved in a preseason game. No, there were a lot of positives in this game, Tim. Uh, for one of them, David Carr was a big positive. He played Played very well. The uh, catch by Billy Miller, excellent. Texans did a lot of things right tonight. They did a few things wrong, but you're going to expect that from an expansion team playing their first game ever. Offensively, they showed a lot of good things tonight. Uh, the offensive line playing without their two starting left tackle, uh, the left tackle and the right tackle. They played pretty well. Uh, the running backs did okay. Uh, James Allen made a few gains. The Texans moved the ball pretty well in the first quarter until Carr was picked. So what the Texans are saying right now is they're looking at the positives, what they can see, what they can build on from here. We're still waiting to get a uh, report on Leomont Evans, how badly he's injured. We're waiting to hear from the Texans. They're inside the locker. So as soon as we hear something, we'll get right back to you, Tim. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Now let's uh, go back to uh, Canton, Ohio again, live, standing by Gina Gaston. Uh, fans, a big part of this story, excited as we are about okay, the uh, well, situation we'll tonight. Okay, here from uh, outside the stadium uh, here in Canton, Ohio. And yes, Bob, I don't think the score was indicative of the performance on the team um, of the team on the field. And had it not been those, those uh, two late interceptions, uh, it could have been, it would have been much closer than that. But while we've been out here watching the football game. Gina Gaston plunged right in. You went on into the stadium among the fans. Yeah, what was it like up there? I, I got a chance to talk to a lot of the fans. I got to tell you, once again, a lot of the people I saw in the stadium that were wearing Texans paraphernalia were not from Texas, so we've got fans all over the country. But I found probably a group of about 100 or 150 or so Texans fans who were watching this game. And yeah, I know we didn't win, but they were not feeling pessimistic at all. A storybook evening at Fawcett Stadium for the Houston Texans debut. I don't think tonight matters. It would be great if they did win, but it's wonderful just seeing that we have our dream has been realized. We're here. It's their first game, and I'm pretty in, really into football. And it's my first game that I've actually came to a football game. 
Cunningham. Back in the NFL after five years' absence, the Texans fans are flocking to them for more than just football. Since he's a te uh, Texans fan and I love the logo, so I'm addicted to it. Reaction to the Texans' performance against the New York Giants was a bit less enthusiastic, especially after a slow start. The passes are scary, but he'll get better. <laughs> they kind of they kind of wobble. It looks like Sonny Jurgensen. <laughs> and you're a fan. And I'm a fan. I love this kid. They need a couple scores, you know, a long run, maybe a kickoff, run back, something. But I'm liking it. I'm just glad to have football back. But fans appear patient. So far for a rookie team, we're doing great. We're off, to, we're off to a good start. We'll have a great season eventually. We're, we've got a great team. Well, it's just they're just getting started. You know, it's the first game of a first season, so it's exciting just to watch, just to be here. And it really was a lovely night for football here, a good family night. The stands here at Fawcett Stadium were pretty much filled. They uh, hold about 22,000 people or so. A lot of people left early, though, because a lot of the folks are not from our area. We certainly will not be seeing that at Reliance Stadium, Game however. did run over. And it's gotten cooler. you got a jacket <laughs> on do, now. yeah. Okay. okay, we'll have more from up here in a few minutes right now. Let's go back to Tim Melton in Houston. Tim. All right, thank you very much, Dave and Gina. Appreciate it. Uh, joining us now here in Texan Central, Alan Pinkett, former running back for the Oilers and at Notre Dame he was an All-American 86 to 91 with the Oilers we thank you for being with us thanks for joining us on the earlier show at six o'clock David Carr that's the guy that everybody's talking about that is the center of attention right now first of all uh, your initial impression of the job he did tonight playing a half of football well very impressed not just with his arm strength because that's a given that a, a young quarterback's gonna have great arm strength but uh, just the way he was able to zip those passes and, and being on target with the passes, he always put the ball on the numbers. He put the ball in a catchable spot. Not only that, great poise, great command of the team, getting the team in and out of the huddle. You know, a lot of character there I can see with this guy. A lot of good things you can build a good football team on. Now, something about a quarterback that most of us don't particularly recognize but in watching the game with you tonight you did see and those are the technical aspects of his game that you liked as well yeah there are some areas that you, he's gonna have to work on no doubt about it but there are things he can correct there were a couple times where he was using his shoulders to pump fake and a DB on this level is not gonna take that and say oh he's gonna throw it he can do that move with his eyes or just with the ball now, later on, he ended up using that same pump fake, but he used his eyes to look off the defenders and then throw back to Billy Miller in the end zone, and that's where it was effective. But getting rid of that little hitch with the, with the shoulders and just using the ball and using his eyes, he'll be a lot more effective. Okay, he also threw an interception tonight. Should be pointed out that there was more to it than just throwing it right to the DB, right? Oh, no doubt about it. You know, when you look at it on television, you can you can just see him throwing a pass to a wide open defensive back, but it was more than that. Uh, quarterbacks throw the ball to where the receiver is going to be, not necessarily where he is. And Gaffney uh, slipped and fell on that play. He slipped and fell. Thus I guess he's uh, not used to being on the turf. That's right. Uh, you know, another aspect of this Texans team, uh, the quarterback, I guess, of the defense would be the linebackers. They are key in this 3-4 set. Up. Let's go back live to Canton. Bob Allen standing by with one of those linebackers. Bob? Yeah, Tim, I'm outside the locker room with Jeff Posey. Super game tonight, two sacks. Uh, thank you. Uh, Coach called the right plays and put me in position to make plays, and, uh, and I made them. Now, you're fighting Mitchell for that starting spot. You just had to help a little bit tonight. I hope so. Uh, you know, it's a long season, though, and we still got a couple, um, still have a few preseason games to go, and and we just going to continue to battle for the position. Jeff, overall, what was the feeling out there? This was your first game. Your first game is a team. It's a new team. Were there nerves? Did you have to shake some rust off? Uh, yes, I had to shake a little. Uh, the streamers against uh, the Cowboys helped, and anytime you know, you get, get ready to go back and start, you know, start back working again. Yeah, and there were some butterflies and, and a lot of excitement. Defensively, what positives do you take from this game? Uh, I, just, I think we're going to be great on defense. I was just, I was just thinking about um, how I was, when, I, when I wasn't in the game, how our young guys were just flying around to the football also, and I think we're going to be okay. Jeff, congratulations. Appreciate it. Jeff Posey, linebacker for the Texans. We'll be back with more live from here. Tim, let's go back to you. All right, actually, it's back to Art and Shara.
Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that, as well as the rest of the crew there. Houston sports bars, no doubt, enjoyed a very successful night tonight. They were packed tonight with Texans fans. Jeff Ealing spent the night watching the game with one group. He's live in West Houston now with their take on the game. Jeff? Well, Sharon and our East fans couldn't make it to Canton, Ohio. They were not going to miss this game for anything in the world. They came out here early. They stayed late. And no matter the score, they love their Texans. From the kickoff, to David Carr's first touchdown. <laughs> Texan fans kept it loud. Football Texans, yeah! And proud. I'm so excited, I can't stand it. For these fans, it doesn't matter how the team looks on this first game in franchise history. What matters is that they can finally see Houston back in the NFL spotlight. Now that I get to see them, it's good, no matter how they're doing, man. All Texans all the way! Yeah! The team may be new, but these fans are well-schooled. They know this is just a preseason game and there'll be plenty of tough times ahead. But tonight, no one cares about that. By just showing up, the Texans are winners. Let's just get a chance to see Texan, you know, Houston football again. You know, after the Oilers, that didn't go well, so good to see Houston playing. Well, the game may be over, but the party is still going on, and that, of course, is great news for Nick and all the other sports bar owners across the city of Houston. The Texans are finally on TV. They're finally playing their games, and the fans love them. Reporting live, Jeff Felix, 13, Eyewitness News. All right, Jeff. Barely heard you through that crowd there, but it sounded great, huh? Yeah. A lot of energy there, no doubt about it, as well as throughout all the sports clubs tonight. Yeah, you know, I think all that energy has probably raised temperatures outside, if it's possible to raise them anymore. David Tillman standing by to give us our first look at the weather. David? Yes, the uh, weather is a bit calm around uh, southeast Texas right now, although temperatures are probably a little warmer, as you said, a little while ago. Uh, further to the east, uh, the weather is still very active. This is Tropical Depression Bertha, center of the system now to the north north and west of New Orleans with 20 mile per hour winds. You can see the convection beginning to die down. That is typical for this time of evening, but I'm watching for late tonight and first thing tomorrow morning if the convection picks up once again, the thunderstorm activity. That's an indication to me that this is still a system to deal with as it moves in our direction. Here's what's happening right now. Weak high pressure in the western Gulf of Mexico, strong high pressure to the north, a lot of deep moisture with the system. And over the next couple of days, the system uh, will begin to pull a lot of moisture in our direction, and that's going to mean very good chances for heavy rain uh, starting sometime Tuesday night, lasting through the day on Thursday. And again, there could be some heavy rain and some possible flooding here in southeast Texas. We'll detail that coming up in weather in just a few. All right. Thank you, David. Thanks. Lots of Texans coverage still ahead, but we're also going to update tonight's other top stories. Um, most of them are ugly. Coming up, the battle to clean up a Houston neighborhood, even though the city says it can't do much to help. Plus, the Houston Texans are bringing together fans of every kind. Coming up, we'll introduce you to one group that's expected to make some noise. And what are Houstonians saying about the new Monday night football team of Al Michaels and Judd Men? That's coming up a little bit later. You're watching ABC 13, Houston's News Leader. Live with Dave Ward, Shara Pryor, Marvin Zindler, Ed Brandon, and Bob Allen. This is 13th Eyewitness News, Houston's News Leader. The special edition of 13 Eyewitness News brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Buick's hottest closeout ever ends September 3rd. Zero percent APR for five years. Nearly 4,700 average finance savings on Buick's remarkable new rendezvous. Offering the best of a luxury sedan, minivan, and SUV. Take 3,000 cash back or zero percent APR on every new 2002 Buick. Five years of interest-free financing ends September 3rd. See your Houston area Buick dealer. Hey, what's that? Morning mix. Hmm. Sex pieces, cranberries, raisins. You know, I had an idea to invent something like this. Really? Was it as good as your idea for the remote control toaster? Much better. <laughs> well, this has fruits and nuts. I had fruits and nuts, too. I had a different name, though. Dave's good stuff. Morning mix. A grab-and-go bag of crispy Czech cereal with sweet raisins, tangy cranberries, and almonds all mixed together. How long did it take you to think that one up? Morning mix from Czechs. Breakfast to go. 
Newspapers reported Tony Sanchez's bank laundered $25 million in drug money, stuffed into suitcases, flown to Texas, and deposited in his bank. A federal judge confirmed Sanchez's bank wired millions in laundered drug money to Manuel Noriega's Panama. The Justice Department said Sanchez had a choice, to cooperate with law enforcement or the drug dealers. Sanchez chose the drug dealers. Well, I'm, I'm very proud of the way our savings and loan handled that matter. Can Texans really trust Tony Sanchez? It's a battle in the Big Easy. The Texans are on NBC 13. Saturday at 7, our Houston Texans take on the New Orleans Saints in a preseason showdown. ABC 13. Before kickoff, join 13 Eyewitness News for in-depth Texans coverage. And stay with us after the game for extended team coverage. Texans and Saints, Saturday at 7, right here on the official TV home, ABC 13. It's showtime. Come on, let me show you where it's at. Come on, let me show you where it's at. Come on, let me show you where it's at. The name of the place is... I like it like that. wanted him to play 30 plays, and he'll probably get a few more in as well after this one. Maybe he won't have to. It's caught by Billy Miller. Touchdown. That was pretty. Now, if you want to attend either of the Texans' preseason home games, there aren't that many tickets left. We're told there are fewer than 2,000 tickets for the preseason games against Miami and Tampa Bay. But you can buy those online at the Houston Texans website. And we will link you there from our website at abc13.com. Reliance Stadium is going to be packed when the Texans get their first chance to play at home. No doubt about it. Eyewitness News, uh, Darren Lynn. Reporter Darren Lynn is there live tonight to continue our live team coverage. Darren? Art and Sheriff fans will make this new and state-of-the-art Reliance Stadium home for the inaugural season of Houston Texans football. And there's one particular group of fans that's expected to play an important role in that crowd. Houston Texans fans are going nuts at Varus Sports Bar on the north side. From the moment the first preseason game kicked off, these folks brought in a new era of Texans football. It's important to the city and the community. We finally have got a team that can take us to another level. In fact, the manager of Varas is one of 25 people here who has bought season tickets. This is the first game right here of the season, Dallas Cowboys and the Texans. It's going to be a big rival. Dallas is big, and they live out in, you know, the countryside, so uh, we got the city folks over here, so they, they're spreading everywhere. The Mexican-American community outside of Houston has usually supported the Dallas Cowboys, but after today, that's no more. Typically, a Mex you know, Mexican-Americans are we're Cowboy fans up to today, obviously. Uh, we are now, it's a new team in town, and... Uh, we, I'm going to follow them from the beginning. Extremely exciting. Ever since they took the Houston Orders away, we've always gone back to Dallas. And now that Dallas is over there, we have the Houston Texans. Houston Texans rule right now. <laughs> Go Texans! Go! At Westcott Bar on the west side, Mexican Americans have that same feeling about the Texans. Jane Cortez is celebrating for two reasons. This is an awesome birthday. Hey, you know, you figure, you know. I'm as young as I am, and a new team, Houston is going to be number one. And the fans say win or lose, that doesn't matter. The fact is they've waited five long years to get a new football team, and they plan to root the Houston Texans to victory the entire season. Reporting live from Reliance Stadium, Darren Lynn, 13 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Darren. That new stadium behind Darren holding 70,000 people. That'll be a lot when the games get underway. By comparison, Fawcett Stadium in Canton has a capacity of just over 22,000. We're going back to Fawcett Stadium right now and our Bob Allen. Bob? Okay, uh, Cher, we are live with Michael Jenkins, uh, Texans running back. Offensively, what would you like tonight? Um, I thought we did a lot of things well. You know, we're still struggling, but the great thing is we can take, we can take away from this and know that we can do a little bit more and, and get a lot better. What, uh, what 
you, you seem to get some penalties or an interception or a pick sometimes, but that's, I guess that's to be expected with a, a first-year expansion team. Well, you know, you can say that can be expected, but, we, you know, we really got to work hard on eliminating that thing, especially as an expansion team. You, we're going to come out and play, you know, play perfect in order to be able to compete. What did you see out there that you think you can build on for next week? Effort. You know, everybody went out there hard. Everybody went out there with the expectation to win. And anytime you do that, you can build on You can work the other things. I was asking some of the other guys. Is it a little nerve-wracking being out there the first game on a new team with a bunch of new teammates? Um, I guess uh, nerve-wracking is not quite the question, but you know, I, th I think everybody kind of got to get a feel for everybody, you know. We practice together, but we still have to learn each other and, you know, who, who you, what your guy next to you is going to do. Quick turnaround, you got the Saints on Saturday. Yeah, that is a quick turnaround, but I think we'll be ready. All right, Michael, thank you. Appreciate right, thank it. You. Michael Jenkins uh, played in the CFL for Toronto last year. Let's go back to you. Okay, Bob, this is Dave Ward and Gina Gaston just outside the stadium, and uh, uh, the people are still uh, moving out of here. We still got buses roaring <laughs> behind us, fireworks going off, either that or gunshots. I hope oh, they we're don't shoot it's us. Fireworks. <laughs> but, you know, we uh, on the way up here yesterday, uh, a photographer, George Brown, and I were able to ride with the Houston Texans on board their uh, uh, Continental Airlines charter. It was a pretty subdued airplane, I must tell you that. Every seat in that plane was full. The roster on the, uh, the, for the Texans is still up nearly 100 players. Uh, with, and with all the staff and uh, press and uh, other people in the plane, every seat was full. If you can imagine these huge guys <laughs> crunched in there, three abreast, and still trying to study their plays, their playbook, and uh, get ready for this game. They really were uh, uh, in focused on this ball game. There was no horseplay whatsoever on board that airplane. And now what it's going to be like on the way back to Houston uh, tonight, I don't know. But I'm going to have to uh, put this microphone down and turn it over to you, Gina, and run all the way across to the other side of the stadium to catch that bus to get to the airport. You get to fly back with them. Yes, we're going back with the team tonight, and it will be interesting to see how the coaches react to what happened on the field, how the players react to what happened on the field, and of course we're all glad to hear the good news about uh, the player Evans who was I injured in the first quarter and is getting better and better with every report that we hear. That obviously is very good news, and I'm sure the players know that, and they will be rejoicing. Yeah. Well, from so. the interviews that Bob has already conducted with mm -hmm. the players, it sounds as though they're taking this as a learning lesson, and that's good That's to true. See. That's you know, true. Dave, if I could, mm -hmm. if I thought that I could be with the arm wrestle contest, I would challenge you to one for that seat on that bus and that flight. But uh, I'll be joining you in Houston tomorrow myself. But you okay. have a safe travel back to Houston. Very good. With Thank the team. you, Gina. Thank you. <laughs> and now let's go back to Tim Melton live in the studio. Tim. David, Gina, thank you very much. I uh, want to update you on the situation with uh, the uh, ball game tonight. Sometimes we talk about all the aspects of it and lose the particulars. 34-17, Giants come out the winner tonight. Uh, David Carr to Billy Miller, the tight end, on the scrimmage on Friday night against the Cowboys. That was the big connection for David Carr, the tight end. Uh, like he said, that's a quarterback's friend. That was a hookup for a touchdown. Kent Graham, backup quarterback, hookup for a touchdown to Sherrod Gideon in the second half. Chris Brown, a field goal. That's your scoring for the uh, Texans tonight. I want to get back to Alan Pinkett, former Oilers and Notre Dame running back, to uh, get your take on the defensive side of the football because David Carr has all the tools, but still defense is going to carry this team. What did you think initially tonight? Initially, they started out slow. They were playing just a base defense, sort of bending but not breaking, although they ended up breaking because Tiki Barber was ripping them for some runs. That's uh, going to be a problem if teams can thrash you up the middle. Gary Walker, get healthy. Yeah, Gary Walker is going to be such a vital part of that defense because he's a big guy who can just stuff up the middle and allow those linebackers to run free and make tackles. But as the game progressed, they were able to put a little more pressure on the quarterback. They started running some line stunts and games, running around the formation to get some sacks. And, you know, I think just commenting on what Michael Jenkins said, there was a lot of effort from that team. As the game went on, they continued to just, you know, put out a lot of effort and play hard like it was a regular season game. Okay. Uh, so there was a mention there by uh, Dave Ward about the injury to Leamont Evans, safety for the Texans. Uh, at the beginning, we thought this was really something serious uh, because they said reported no feeling in his upper body, no feeling in his legs. The reports have continued to get better and better, so we want to go back live via telephone to Canton, Ohio, and Bob Slovak for the latest on Evans. Bob?
Yeah, I'm still here at the Altman Hospital, and uh, Texans owner Bob McNair just just arrived, went up and visited with uh, Evans for a little while, then came back down. I was able to talk to uh, Mr. McNair. He said that Evans does have feeling and movement in both of his legs and both of his arms. He said he shook Evans' hand. At first it was a little weak, but by the time he left uh, the room, the handshake had gotten a lot stronger. So things are definitely looking good for Leamon Evans right now. But, of course, Bob McNair says everyone's praying for him. Uh, and hopefully things are going to turn out good. He, uh, Bob McNair also said he knows this is part of football. It's the scary side of football. You hope it never happens to anyone, but things are looking a little bit better now for Leamon Evans. Uh, and that is the latest update here from Altman Hospital in Canton. Bob Swovac, 13 Eyewitness Sports. All right. Thank you very much for the work, Bob. We appreciate that. Now let's go back live to Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Ohio. Bob Allen standing by with a guy that everybody expected to be on the offensive line but didn't have some of his partners there tonight. Right, Bob? Yeah, Steve McKinney was uh, one of the few veterans tonight on the, on the offensive line. A uh, little more leadership playing with some of the rooks, huh? Yeah, yeah, you kind of have to kind of take that role when you're playing with so many younger guys. I mean, you got to kind of help them out, get them in the right place. For a first game, you're, you're a four-year NFL veteran. For the first game on a new team, how would, what kind of grade would you give this? Uh, I don't know about grade. I think that we have a lot of improvement to do. You know, obviously we had too many negative yardage runs, and but I mean we also had a lot of positive things. So I feel I feel pretty good coming out of this game that we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good team, I and mean, we're gonna go back and correct the film. You know, look at what we had, what we did wrong. But uh, I think coming out Saturday we should be a much better team. With well, a rookie at left tackle and a rookie at right guard, how did the offensive line do considering that? I thought we did well. I mean, we, we passed protected pretty well. I mean, we didn't give it much pressure. I, don't, I think David got hit like one time, you know, so I'm, I was pleased with that. The pass protection was good. You know, our run blocking, we got to work on that. I think a lot of that might have been assignments. You know, we have to, we got to make sure we're blocking the right guys first of all, but we'll, get, we'll correct that tomorrow. Real quickly, the positives you take from this? I think that it was, it was positive that, you know, we were able to get out here and just play, you know, for, for a team that has not been together. This gives us a chance to kind of get together as a team and kind of figure out who's going to be our, you know, our playmakers, our leaders, who's going to step up in crunch time, you know, who can we count on during the game to do their job, you know. So this was this was a big stepping stone for that. Okay, Steve. Thank you. Have a good right. flight back. Thanks, Steve McKinney, the Texans center. Let's go back to Houston. All right, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to talk to uh, Alan Pinkett again, touch on this uh, Liam on Evans situation one more time from a player's perspective. That is, I guess, the fear that hangs over you throughout your career. Well, you know, the one thing you have to do as a player is always be a warrior on the field and almost be superhuman. But the one thing that scares you is knowing that even though you're going out on the field trying to be big and bad, that you might not walk off of that field. And uh, having gone through the situation of seeing guys lay on the field motionless, it's scary as a player, and it's hard to get back into that warrior mentality mm -hmm. after you've seen one of your, your family laying there on the field not moving a thumb or anything like that so it's it's hard to get that intensity level back up and it's just it's very scary and just you know all my prayers go out yeah and very tough on family as well to have to sit there and watch that and Leamon Evans uh, a wife and uh, two daughters and a little boy so uh, we want to give them our best as well and hope everything is all right with Leamon Evans as we say the reports continue to get better and better uh, the final tonight once again Preseason game number one, Hall of Fame game, Canton, Ohio, 34 for the Giants, 17 for the Texans. It's going to go uphill from here. A lot of positives tonight. Art and Shara? Hey, Tim, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thousands of you were watching the game right here on ABC, but also many of you were surfing our Channel 13 website. At halftime of tonight's game, many of you logged on to ABC13.com to chat with the former Oiler, Alan Pinkett. And if it has anything to do with the Texans, you can always find it right there on ABC13.com. From ticket information to stadium information, as well as player bios, take a look. We think you'll like what you see there. ABC13.com. Still ahead, some news tonight. The state of Texas wants an insurance giant to pay up. Also ahead, find out what the state is saying about a popular insurance carrier and what it did to its customers. And on the heels of another deadly bombing in the Middle East, Israel responds. That's ahead on Eyewitness News Tonight. And here are tonight's Cash 5 numbers, 10, 7, 35, 37, 6. And the pick three numbers, 2, 5, 9.
one else goes the distance to cover local news like 13 Eyewitness News. That's why we're right where news is happening. At Ground Zero in New York City for the final chapter. The damage is so violent. The Vatican in Rome. A painful and shameful issue facing the church. On a daring smuggler's journey spanning nine states. Tell everybody we catch up with us. Bringing you exclusive coverage you won't get anywhere else. 13 Eyewitness News, Houston's news leader. of what ails you at Kroger, where it costs less to get more. Rick Perry's attack ad is a lie, but don't take our word for it. Perry's proof? A federal judge. But the judge himself says Perry's attack is, quote, absolutely false and out of context. In fact, his ruling was on a different bank, not owned by Sanchez. Perry just made it up. And the Perry campaign admits there's no known connection to Noriega. Rick Perry made that up, too. Rick Perry, we didn't elect him. We shouldn't believe him. Ooh, custard style. Oh, that looks good. Wind in your hair, good. Sun in your face, good. Hugging the curbs, good. Driving barefoot, good. <laughs> Yo play custard style, now in creme caramel and blackberry. It is so good. You are so right. This is good. Favorite song on the radio? Good. <laughs> we are so lost. Good. Introducing the Isuzu Axiom. It says sexy city style. It has a V6 with 230 horses. Giddy up. Leather trim seats, smooth and supple. Plenty of cargo space, too. And America's longest and sexiest warranty. The Isuzu Axiom. You want one, don't you? Now get 0% APR for up to five years or up to $4,500 cash back. 13 Eyewitness News has closed caption for the hearing impaired. Dozens of Spring Branch apartment buildings are empty of tenants tonight, but full of problems. Neighbors want those buildings at Ridgeview and Spenwick torn down, and even the city of Houston admits they're ugly. But ugly isn't illegal. Tonight, Eyewitness News reporter Ted Oberg met with neighbors. He is live now at that apartment complex. Ted? Sure. Good evening. You can tell from just how high these weeds are behind me that this place doesn't get the attention some neighbors think it deserves, but that's not even the big problem. Look down this road here. There are one, two, three, six, seven, or eight vacant apartment buildings. But so long as they're boarded up, that's fine, according to city ordinance. They're fairly ugly, yes, I would say that. Bill Pringles lived in this house for 20 years. He's grown those back bushes pretty thick to keep out visions of his neighbors. We like uh, that so that we won't uh, particularly see that uh, 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 neighborhood. This is what Pringle is talking about, the abandoned part of the Hilton Town Apartments. Dozens of buildings. This building here, the roof is gone. On top of the building over there, we've got air conditioning units hanging up there. That building is caving in. As president of the area's super neighborhood council, Catherine Barchfield has been fighting this thing for a long time. You can tell by looking at it, it's not letting it happen yesterday. In fact, the city and the owner of this property have been fighting about it for years. The owner is supposed to have all the buildings boarded up and volunteered to put a fence up around them. But it's not too secure. Most of them are ugly. They're her name is Monticella Flanagan, and she works for the city. Today, she met with her boss and neighborhood leaders, but had to tell them there's only so much the city can do. There are no laws that would, that would allow you to force an owner to make them pretty. That is not enough for Catherine Barchfield, who wants the city to tear down every last abandoned building. I will call them once a week, as I have been for the last five months, and make sure that it does get done. Three buildings at a time, two buildings at a time. As the president of the neighborhood super council in this area, she's fairly determined to make sure that buildings that have graffiti like this one don't stay as a visual blight on her neighborhood. Well, the city has agreed to tear some of these buildings down and board some of the ones up a little bit better that the owner has not done. But 
After that, their hands are tied. The owner has gone through several extensions with the city, and now the city is running out of patience, but has few options. Live in Spring Branch, Ted Oberg, 13 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Ted. Well, Texas is suing an insurance giant. The state says Farmers Insurance Group reduced coverage for policyholders while raising premiums. It further states the insurance carrier is improperly charging Texans to cover catastrophic catastrophes in other states. Governor Rick Perry says what the state found is unacceptable. I can assure you that with that type of market, uh, that if a company wants to leave the state of Texas because they don't want to be fair with our consumers, don't let the door hit them in the back. The lawsuit asks for a refund of excessive premium payments that could total $140 million. A farmer's spokesperson says the company broke no Texas laws and is committed to the state even though it is losing money. Moving on now to the crisis in the Middle East, Israel striking back at the Palestinian terrorists with an attack at a suspected weapons factory in the Gaza Strip. Israeli helicopters fired three missiles at what is portrayed as a spare parts, spare car parts factory in Gaza City. Three buildings were damaged, four people reported slightly injured. The retaliatory action comes after a string of terror attacks against Israelis that killed 18 people in a 24-hour period. Israel has also banned Palestinian travel in the northern West Bank. A legal advisor for the Palestinian Authority is in Houston tonight giving her version of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's very important that we empower the community and give them the correct facts in terms of what's really going on in Palestine. Sadly, the media has done uh, not a very good job at covering the events there, simply focusing on violence and not focusing on the root causes of that violence. Diana Butu blames the conflict on which she says is 35 years of Palestinians being denied freedom. Until they get that freedom, she says, Israel will not have security. Butu was one of many speakers tonight at the Arab American Cultural Community Center in Southwest Houston. American planes targeted an Iraqi command bunker today in the southern no-fly zone. U.S. authorities say it was in retaliation for Iraqi anti-aircraft firing on U.S. planes. Meantime, Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein is inviting U.S. lawmakers to tour facilities where weapons of mass destruction may be hidden. President Bush says the invitation falls far short of the rigorous inspections that are needed. The president says a U.S. military assault could be used to remove Hussein from power, but other tactics are being considered as well. The number of suspected West Nile virus cases in human beings here in Texas is now up to 10. State health officials report two new possible cases in Dallas County. All 10 people possibly infected are expected to recover from that mosquito-borne disease. Five of the suspected human cases are in Harris County, two are in Orange County, and one is in nearby Jefferson County. Little weather news here. Bertha is now a tropical depression downgraded from a tropical storm. So far, she has dumped between five and eight inches of rain on parts of Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. Bertha is blamed for the drowning death of a 54-year-old Louisiana man in the Florida panhandle. He died yesterday while trying to save his two 12-year-old grandchildren in the rough surf. Okay, Rever weather, always something to take seriously, and mm -hmm. even though we're not in for that, the heat is something we have to contend with. Yes, we've had some hot conditions around here, especially for today. Not as many thunderstorms as we saw over the weekend, so temperatures were on the warm side. We still need to keep an eye on Bertha because the system is expected to head in our direction, and there's a possibility that we could see some pretty heavy rain around here and possible flooding. Earlier this afternoon, we did have some showers, especially to the south and southwest of Houston down the Highway 59 corridor. Those showers have now gone away. A few speckles of green here and there to the north of Hempstead. Those are false echoes, so we're not seeing any rain here in southeast Texas at this time. Further to the east, we had a pretty strong feeder band uh, producing a lot of heavy rain over parts of uh, southern Alabama back into Mississippi and back into Florida. That uh, feeder band is now pretty much fizzled into just a few showers and thunder showers over the Gulf of Mexico. Further to the east, though, uh, further to the west, though, near New Orleans, that's where the system is located at this time. And there's still some convection with it. There's the center of the system just about right there. I'm going to be watching this overnight to see if it develops any more into more convection as we go towards the morning hours. If that happens, that tells me that this system is a lot like Allison and that there is the potential for some heavy rain and flooding. However, the system is not expected to stay around southeast Texas for several days like Allison did. So 
we're not expecting quite that much rain. Uh, for tomorrow afternoon, there will be some sea breeze thunder showers across uh, parts of southeast Texas. That'll be just about it. Most of the moisture with the system will be moving in our direction and should make it here sometime Tuesday night through the day on Thursday, and it'll be during that period of time that we could see some heavy rain around southeastern Texas, so we will keep an eye on that. What are we expecting? Most areas between 2 and 4 inches, a couple of isolated spots, 6 plus inches. Low today, 72. High today, 94. That is near normal. Right now, we have temperatures in the 70s and low 80s around the area. 74% humidity, calm wind at this time. Now, the tropical depression number 3 off the South Carolina coast is not heading in this direction, so that is good news. Here's your 5-day forecast. 40% coming up for tonight. Uh, uh, raise the chance of rain on Wednesday to 70%. 60% coming up for Thursday. 40% on Friday. And then the moisture hangs around into the weekend. So we've got Saturday's chance of rain at 60%. So we'll be watching the time period from Tuesday night through Thursday. That'll be the time that we could see some heavy rain around. I guess we still need the rain, right? We're, still We're about a little five behind. inches behind still, but we don't need the floods that right. come with those. Yeah, but it's lowering, lowering temperatures, and that's good. That's good, yes. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, David. You. All right. Tonight, a little bit long further on here, more on the Houston Texans debut. Coming up, you're going to meet one Houston Texan who played his first game of organized football tonight. And we're staying on top of the devastating injury of the Texan Leomont Evans. If we get any updates on his condition, we'll certainly let you know about it. And all those Catch me a Sunday, McDonald's on a Monday. A chunk of chunk of chocolate shake on Tuesday. Apple pie from the sky, ate it on Wednesday. Cookies on Thursday, a flurry Friday night. Fruit and yogurt buffet. I wanted something like. Cool, creamy, crunchy, fruity, me, just for you. Try a cool creamy cone for just 39 cents or a delicious chocolate dip cone for only 69 cents. We love to see you smile. Hurry in now for big closeout deals on every 2002 Mercury in stock. Wow, they're really making a big deal out of this Mercury model year closeout. Announcing 0% APR financing for up to 60 months or up to $3,500 cash back on selected 2002 Mercuries. See your Texas Mercury dealer today. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that is Eternity for Man, Calvin Klein. It's free gift time at the Calvin Klein Fragrance Counter. At Foley's. Foundation problems? Benefit from the highest quality foundation repair at a price you can afford with Atlas Foundation Repair's 0% financing program. Call Atlas today and get your foundation repaired with 0% financing. That's the Atlas advantage. Experience people, quality service, and the cable lock system. With its lifetime transferable warranty, that's the Atlas advantage. Foundation problems? Call 713-641-4844 for your free inspection today. Fix it with Atlas and fix it for good with 0% financing. Yes, Wayne, we are in the dark. All of those streetlights have been out for two years. After his illuminating investigation, in the, dark. the city and the power company have seen the light. And it's pitch black. Now, thanks to Wayne Dolcefino, if you're in the dark, just dial 311 to get your street lights fixed. Thank you. Good job. 13 Undercover. Investigations that get results. Thank you, Wayne, for a great job you do. And this message. I'm Chris Beery. Tonight on Nightline, they have accused us of abandoning them once before. Now that we seem to have won the war easily and quickly, are we losing the peace? What comes after victory? That's our focus tonight. Groove the eke out. Third down and 14. Graham going for six and right on target to Sharon Gideon for the touchdown. 
I am Gina Gaston, live outside of Fawcett Stadium, also known as Hall of Fame Stadium, and I am flying solo right now because Dave Ward is flying home. He and the Texan players on their way now from the bus to the planes here where they'll be flying back into Houston late tonight. One down, one in the history books, an exciting night for everybody. However, we do know if you've been watching Channel 13 throughout the evening that the Texans did lose their first outing, but a lot still for which to be proud of. And Bob Allen joining us now from live inside Fawcett Stadium where he's been talking to players and management. And Bob, what are they saying about this first one? Uh, what they're saying basically is they need to build on the positives. They've made a pretty good showing for the first time out, but there's a lot of things that they can learn from that. Now, one thing I did learn inside just a few minutes ago is some very good news about Leomont Evans, the young man who was carted off the field, who didn't have any feeling in his arms or legs as he left the field. Well, he was taken to the hospital. X-rays were done. They were negative. CAT scan was done. It was negative. And uh, x-rays, CAT scan, everything was negative. All his tests were negative. He'll, he's going to stay overnight here, and then he's going to return to Houston tomorrow, which is excellent news considering everybody got such a huge scare out of that. Now, just a little while ago, we were in the press conference where Dom Capers, the head coach, addressed the media. I have no problem with our effort. The most important thing for this football team is as we come in tomorrow night, we take a good look at this because we can learn an awful lot from this this game and, and one of the things that we will have to be is we'll have to be an efficient football team and you can't make the mental errors and the penalties and give up the big plays and have the minus yardage plays and have a chance to win in the NFL so that's part of the process we'll go through and there's a lot to learn from this game tonight <coughs> <laughs> and Charlie Casserly the general manager talked to him just a little while ago well, I was very encouraged. I was very encouraged. Yeah, the approach you take to preseason, especially with a young team like ours, is you look for positives, and and what and then you build off the positives. Uh, you don't worry about scores or anything like that because you're playing so many players, and and some of the players that affect the score nece won't necessarily be on the football team. But I was very encouraged. Hey, I'm excited. Can't wait to go to New Orleans. What positives did you see tonight? Well, first of all, without looking at the tape. Uh, there's, there's going to be other things that are positive that you really don't know. But, you know, I thought David Carr. I mean, I think David Carr proved that uh, uh, all our faith in him is there. Uh, he made a I'd throw to uh, Billy Miller for a touchdown. That's a big-time throw. You're not going to see anybody in the league make a better throw than that. Thought he showed poise tonight, scramble ability, move the team. Uh, we're down 10 nothing. He takes us down uh, and keeps us going in a positive direction. So uh, uh, young guys like Sherrard Gideon made, made some good plays in there. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Avion Black. Uh, Jabbar Gaffney, you look for the positives with Jabbar tonight. Had a couple of tough breaks. He falls down one time. Uh, but, you know, you see positives there. I think Jonathan Wells, you see positives there running the football. Hey, the offensive line, they, 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 they hung in there tonight. You know, we're playing with not all our people in there, and those guys fought hard. Defensively, what did you see? Well, I think you really need to look at the tape on that. Uh, you know, you saw some guys when the defensive line with our second unit, uh, Jeff Posey stepped up, made some plays there. But again, I think overall you've got to see the, the, the tape. All right, Charlie Casserly, general manager of the Texans, 34-17. The final, it's the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans next Saturday. Shara, Art? All right, thanks, Bob. Well, the Texans do have a long road ahead. Indeed they do, but this team is filled with players used to tackling obstacles. Take rookie Rashad Kent, who knows all about that. You see, Kent has never played football before. Before tonight, he was a basketball player at Rutgers University and was spotted by pro football scouts. They were so amazed by his athletic ability that Texans decided to give him a shot. And if that's not an obstacle enough, Rashad also overcame another big hurdle in his life. As a child, he was crippled and was never expected to walk. He proved doctors wrong and now could be looking as, at a life as a Houston Texan. Let's check back in now with Tim Melton for a look at how Rashad Kent played tonight. Tim? Well, as you might expect, if you look at the depth chart on the Texans' uh, webpage, you will see Rashad Kent is listed probably fifth or sixth string. But he did get into tonight's game in the fourth quarter, and uh, not much of a look, but I'm sure he's just happy to be on a professional playing field and getting an opportunity for the coaches to see him. And that's going to be the difficult thing for him. They don't have tape they can look at, like an Alan Pinkett, who is an All-American running back and eighth in the Heisman Trophy voting as a senior, and say, okay, we got an idea of what this guy can do. He's going to have to prove it on the field right there, number 49. He was open. Why didn't somebody see him and throw him the football? Rashad's going to be all right. I think the fact that he's gotten this far is proof positive.
that no matter what happens, his career is going to be successful no matter the occupation. All right, we're going to get back to the Texans with Alan Pinkett in just a minute. But first of all, uh, we have to report, unfortunately, the passing of uh, tonight of one of the best and most popular play-by-play -play men in the history of broadcasting. That would be Chick Hearn. The only play-by-play -play man the Los Angeles Lakers have ever had passed away at 6.30 this evening. That comes three days after falling in his backyard, a fall that led to swelling in his brain. Hearn called a record 3,338 consecutive Lakers games between 1965 and last year. But more than that, Chick Hearn became the L.A. Lakers. Jerry West and Elgin Baylor, Kareem, Magic, they could all retire, but Chick was the constant. Unfortunately, he is dead tonight at the age of 85. Back to the Texans, they fall to the New York Giants, 34 to 17. David Carr, the numbers on him, 9 of 17, 95 yards, one touchdown pass, one interception. Uh, Kent Graham is back up, 4 for 4, 56 yards and a touchdown. Ben Sankey, third string quarterback or fourth string quarterback, 12 of 21, 127, but two interceptions. Injuries, you've been hearing about Leamont Evans, Trevor Inslee, a receiver, broke his ankle and Kylie Wong, starting linebacker, sprained his ankle, but there was a possibility he could have come back into tonight's game, so hopefully that is not too serious. Alan Pinkett, an aspect of this team that gets overlooked until they make a mistake or do something big, but looked perhaps better than any aspect of the team tonight, special teams. Yeah, the special teams were indeed special, and the big benefit of the return game is you shorten the field for your offense, and there were great returns by Avion Black, uh, Jabbar Gaffney has some good returns, and those things not only put your offense in good field position, but it gives your offense more confidence because they can open up the playbook, do more things, be more aggressive, because they don't have to worry about the end zone behind them. They can look forward at the end zone in front of them. And Joe Marciano is the guy who runs those special teams. He comes over uh, from Tampa Bay where he did an excellent job. Uh, let's talk about, you know, we want to be positive about this. It's a brand new team, but the fact is, it's an expansion team. Things are going to happen. It's not going to be a bed of roses. There were mistakes tonight. There were a lot of mistakes, and yes, there was effort, but little things like jumping off sides, uh, illegal procedures, things like that, that's going to happen in the first part of the year anyway. If you can minimize those things so that when you get to the regular season, you only have two or three of those a game instead of seven or eight of them, then you're headed in the right direction. Something we have mentioned throughout the day, the starting tackles, offensive tackles on this team, Tony Baselli, Ryan Young, veterans not there. So you're kind of got a mixed match offensive line, which contributes to those sort of things, does it not? It, it does because those guys have to get used to the quarterback's cadence. Uh, Chester Pitts, who's used to playing guard, is in there playing tackle. When Tony Baselli comes back, he'll move back to guard. Just the not being familiar with the position and everything being new. And, of course, Hernan sitting over there across from Michael Strahan, <laughs> yeah. who had more sacks than anybody else in the history of the NFL, sitting there thinking, what am I going to do with this guy? And luckily, I think he only played one series tonight. So that helped the Texans out as well. They fall to the Giants tonight, 34-17. to But this is a growing process, one step at a time. And they took the first step tonight, and it wasn't all that bad. I don't think they uh, hurt themselves too much. There are a lot of positives from this one. Art and Shara? All right, thank you, Tim. Also, another team, a new team, Al Michael and John Madden. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Coming up on Eyewitness News tonight, what Houstonians say about the new Monday Night Football announcing team. Let's have a listen. That's got to be the puppy chow. Vets have been recommending puppy chow for years. There's no better way to get him off to a strong and healthy start. Purina Puppy Chow brand. Puppy Chow Healthy Morsels formula includes real beefy chunks, grains, and vegetables for the nutrition he needs and loves. table honey nut checks the taste of golden honey and nuts that's sweet but not too sweet so everybody likes it 
Honey Nut Checks, the taste that brings families together. For breakfast, anyway. Now buy your favorite General Mills cereal and get a coupon for a select box free. Clean up in aisle three. You know why we really love coming to Delta Downs Racetrack and Casino? It's right next door. It's a place where we can really relax and... Summertime is almost done, but Delta Downs still has fun because you can win a 2002 SUV, a home computer, or cash each Friday and Saturday night beginning August 5th. That's over $250,000 in cash and prizes. Visit DeltaDowns.com for details. Delta Downs Racetrack and Casino. It's not your ordinary casino. It's a race casino. When do they go back to school? In a perfect world, <laughs> school would have already started. Mervyn's Back to School Sale has. Save on LEI, Skechers, Jansport, Side Out, and more. Mervyn's. Big brands, small prices. And you put your big old line in the yes, pool. In the lap pools, there's a flag as the punt bounces at the 35-yard line and backing up to the 25 is Darrell Jones who played his college ball with Jeremy Shockey at Miami. He loses the ball and the Giants are able to cover it up at the 32. But again, A new voice tonight. Tonight's game wasn't just the Houston Texans debut. It was also our first chance to hear the new Monday Night Football team of Al Michaels and John Madden. Now let's go back live to West Houston, where Jeff Elin watched tonight's game with some very enthusiastic fans. Jeff? Yeah, enthusiastic is the word. The people who are still here at Knicks are the hardcore Texans fans. They were impressed with the team and another team, one that you can only see right here on ABC. You know, to be here and to see all those... For many football fans, his is the voice of the game, and John Madden's maiden voyage on Monday Night Football is another source of excitement for Texans fans. I think he's awesome. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember when he was a coach for the Raiders, and players love him, the fans love him, and he's the best one for the game. Teaming Madden with Al Michaels makes a combination Texans fans say they'll enjoy even if the hometown is not in prime time. I think that's a better combination than they had in the past. I think it'd be good. But some fans say they'll miss a face from last year. But I like Des Miller too. He has great jokes and stuff. I thought if they would have given him another year, he might have learned the game a little more and done a great job. You know, most of the people here say that Al Michaels and John Madden worked well together. It's strange that they use that word because I kind of believe that the people who are still here probably will not be going to work tomorrow. Reporting live, Jeff Ealing, 13, Eyewitness News. All right, Jeff, might we be a safe do prediction. expect to see Jeff at work, right? Yeah, Jeff will All be right. here. <laughs> Game one now in the books. But there are four more preseason games to go. Saturday, the Texans take on the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. Then on the 17th, the Texans are in Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. Then it is the Lions Stadium opener on August 24th here in Houston against the Miami Dolphins. And then the Texans close out the preseason against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on September 1st. You will be able to watch all the preseason games here on Channel 13. And you'll have extended coverage both before and after the games again here on Eyewitness News. We'll be back in a moment. Newspapers reported Tony Sanchez Bank laundered $25 million in drug money, stuffed into suitcases, flown to Texas, and deposited in his bank. A federal judge confirmed Sanchez's bank wired millions in laundered drug money to Manuel Noriega's Panama. The Justice Department said Sanchez had a choice, to cooperate with law enforcement or the drug dealers. Sanchez chose the drug dealers. Well, I'm, I'm very proud of the way our savings and loan handle that matter. Can Texans really trust Tony Sanchez? Bring the entire family today to Gallery Furniture Giant Colossal Sale featuring Colossal Selection, Colossal Savings, and immediate delivery on furniture and big screen TVs. The one thing you can't buy at Gallery Furniture, the one thing that's prehistoric, outdated, is frustrating back, 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 back order sets. No back order sets during Gallery Furniture's huge prehistoric sale. What you will find is Colossal Selection, Colossal Savings, immediate financing, immediate delivery, plus a free dinosaur exhibit for the entire family. Open the tin with Colossal Selection, Colossal Savings. Gallery Furniture saves you money today. So, how are you going to keep fleas off your dog this year? Oh, 
only advantage stops fleas from biting in less than five minutes and keeps working all month. It's the fastest relief you can buy. Get advantage from your vet. Don't give fleas a biting chance. minivans available today. Only one comes with the government's highest five-star safety rating, a 10-year warranty, and a starting price of under 20000 The Kia Sedona. Pretty impactful, isn't it? Right now, get a thousand cash back on the 2002 Kia Sedona. In the new stadium last year, signs with the Texans, 22-yard field goal attempt is good. You know, it's at the top of Browns. We're updating right you now on the frightening neck injury suffered tonight by Houston Texans safety Leamont Evans. At last collision, report, Evans is regaining feeling in his arms and legs. Doctors are calling his injury a spinal cord contusion. Evans is a five-year NFL veteran from Abbeville, South Carolina. Every football player is taught to try to avoid the kind of hit that Evans was involved in with his neck exposed. Eyewitness News anchor Stephanie Guadiana is joining us now with some more information about that type of injury. Well, Art and Shara, neck injuries always have the potential to be serious. The worst case scenarios can cause paralysis and even death. Tonight I talked to a Houston doctor who told me that when it comes to determining the severity of these types of injuries, only time will tell. He's going to start right here. Now watch as he comes in to make, see where his head goes down right there? That's what it is. And he, and he hit with his, with his head down. Houston's training staff rushed onto the field as soon as they could to tend to Leamont Evans. Emergency personnel and then, then strapped the 28-year-old player on a backboard and took his face mask off before immobilizing his head and placing him on a stretcher. In the beginning, the first thing to do is prevent any further injury. Dr. David Purse is the director of the EMS physicians so, for the city of Houston and has seen his share of serious whereas, neck injuries. Early on after an injury, uh, if there's fractures and the bones have damaged the nervous system somehow, that will be bad. But the other thing is that there can be swelling and other problems with ligaments being torn and things. At first, Evans had no Recently, feeling in his arms and legs, but was conscious, was and his breathing teams. and vital signs were normal. So as Evans was being treated, the Texans knelt as a group in prayer in front Evans of their bench. The Soon after, yeah. what, several of New York's Leon players Evans also dropped play to a knee for Evans. All are hoping for the best. Fortunately, pretty much every year at the college or professional level, there uh, appears to be somebody who gets a severe neck injury. We also see really miraculous results with these same athletes. Uh, an injury occurs, they either lose all of their sensation or all of their ability to move, and then within sometimes weeks and sometimes years, they get it all back. Well, so far, doctors have given Evans an MRI and a CAT scan. Results of both showed no major damage. The bottom line here, Evans is very fortunate because it could have been much worse. Quite frightening. Mm -hmm. Scary time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for everyone watching it. Yeah. And it looks like he's going to be okay. That's good. Thanks, good. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. When we come back, we are going to check back in with our team in Canton. And we'll wrap up this extended newscast in just a moment after the break. We love to camp, we love to hike, be outside, eat good food, grill. Working out builds up a great big appetite, and he's always hungry. I'm a grill man. Give it to me and I'll grill it. Walmart Supercenter is everything you need in one place. Your food, your clothing. Camping supplies? I'm all about me. <laughs> I'm a big meaty. He's a carnivore. I love the Supercenter. You can get something for everybody. I love fresh produce. The fruit is so delicious, really fresh. You can find everything you need, lots of variety, everything at a great low price. Come on over. We'll feed you. <laughs> In a stop-and-go world, few cars stop and go quite like it. They're back! Popeye's 
firecracker shrimp, tender, crunchy shrimp packed with Popeye's explosive spices for a powder king of Cajun flavor. Serve with fries, dipping sauce, and a biscuit. It's a firecracker shrimp festival for $3.99. Or get 11 pieces of that tantalizing Popeye's chicken for only $8.99. The most delicious tender chicken with that Popeye's flavor we're famous for. We got chicken, firecracker shrimp, you name it. It's here at the festival. Why, it's a love fest. For a limited time, Olshan Foundation Repair is offering 0% financing. Call the experts at Olshan today for a free inspection and information about 0% financing. Foundation Repair has never been more affordable. Get the strength of cable lock and its lifetime transferable warranty. And for a limited time, pay no interest. Call the most trusted name in Foundation Repair since 1933. That's Olshan at 713-223-1900. It's a battle in the Big Easy. The Texans are on NBC 13. Saturday at 7, our Houston Texans take on the New Orleans Saints in a preseason showdown. NBC 13. Before kickoff, join 13 Eyewitness News for in-depth Texans coverage. And stay with us after the game for extended team oh, coverage. Woo! Texans and Saints, Saturday at 7, right here on the official TV home, ABC 13. We're a country that loves competition. If somebody starts mixing it up, we're there. You gotta love the idea of car and driver putting the top four pickups up against each other. And we gotta love the fact that Dodge won. Yep, Dodge Ram is number one over Chevy, Ford, and Toyota. When you're buying a pickup, you can't go wrong putting your money on the only pickup with four full-size doors and a full-size bed. Dodge Ram. Get 0% financing or a $1,500 cash allowance during the Dodge summer clearance. Pretty dreary and quiet right now outside the Football Hall of Fame Stadium and Field. I tell you, it's been an exciting extended weekend or week, you might say, for me and for many Texans fans who traveled from Houston here to try and be an eyewitness to history. The first one now is in the history books, and I have to tell you, the people here have described this adventure in many different ways, but I think one of the ways that I thought was uh, most telling and most poignant was a man who said this was uh, a fantasy, a football lover's fantasy, to be able to watch the birth of the Houston Texans football team. Sure, we lost tonight's game, but a lot of good things uh, happened out in the field tonight, and I know a lot of fans are looking forward to welcoming their team when they get back to Houston. And Bob Allen's inside that stadium where I think they're probably, probably beginning to clean up the grounds. Bob? That's right, Gina. Uh, they are cleaning up. The ABC crew is getting all the wires off the field, packing up everything. Thoughts on the first game of the Texans? Sure, yeah, you're right. They did lose, but I thought they acquitted themselves very well. Uh, it was pretty much what we had expected. They're a new team. They're a young team. They've been practicing together for two weeks. Their starting two left tackles were not playing. They were looking at a lot of young guys. They're David Carr. It's his first real action in a game. He did just fine. So you take, as Charlie Cashley said, those positives and you build on them, and I think they're absolutely headed in the right direction. Now we're going to hear from David Carr and Jermaine Lewis. I was having a blast. I mean, I've been waiting for that forever, you know, to get out there and you know, actually play in the NFL, you know, and uh, that was that was fun for me. I was having a blast. Talk we got four more preseason games. There's a lot of a lot of time to grow and a lot of time to get better at a lot of different things. I mean, there were uh, there were some mistakes out there, but you know, we covered it up um, for the most part by moving the football a little bit. Well, I think we did pretty good. We didn't have like a lot of offsides and stuff in practice. We had a lot of offsides and things like that. I think we tried to turn it around and then just. We were more focused today. We didn't get the win, but I think we have some things that we can obviously build on. And that's the whole key. You build on it and you see what happens next Saturday in New Orleans. Tim, back to you. Gina and Dave Ward uh, and Bob Slovak, who's been keeping us up to date on the uh, situation over the hospital with Liam Mont Evans, and that's continually improving. Uh, we've talked a lot tonight, tonight about David Carr, the Texans' number one pick. The play of the night, however, in this game we haven't shown you yet, was turned in by the Giants' number one pick in the draft. Jeremy Shockey, the tight end. This play brought laughs, I think, from everybody except the guy you're seeing right 
now. Kevin Williams, the defensive back, safety for the Texans. The uh, big tight end ran over him on that play. Kevin will get him the next time, but I think that was probably one of the plays that folks are going to remember from tonight's ball game. And as we've mentioned, next week it is on to New Orleans on Saturday night. Alan Pinkett has been with us for pregame and postgame. Uh, the Giants didn't have a look at the Texans. There was no tape on them. They hadn't played a game. Saints now have a tape to look at. How much will, impact will that have next week? I don't think it'll have much impact at all because most teams play four preseason games. This will be the Saints' first game. So they're going to be more concerned about getting some of their basic things out on the field, having a chance to look at them against other competition. The benefit of having film is at least you know the numbers of the guys you're going to be facing against. Okay. Thank you for being with us I tonight. enjoyed it. We appreciate it. it. Sean Thanks. Jones, yeah. former Oilers defensive end, will be in that chair next Saturday. That will be for the game against New Orleans. So one is down. The team will be coming back. No practice tomorrow. They'll get back to work early Wednesday morning. Art and Shara. All right, Tim, thank you very much, and we appreciate you as well as the rest of the crew out there. I mean, Magnificent job. It's been a great night. It sure has. And that's yes. our report for tonight. Stay tuned. Nightlight coming up next. Cheryl Keck, Minerva Pettis for Eyewitness News tomorrow at 5 a.m. Be sure to join them. Meantime, for Art Rascone, Tim Melton, David Tillman, and our entire team in Canton, I'm Cheryl Fryer. We thank you for being with us, and good night. Good night. been watching 13 Eyewitness News, Houston's number one 10 o'clock news.